Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is the English translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Mawlana Qamaruz Jamal Sahib Damat Barakatuhum, which took place on the 16th of Safar, 1444, Wednesday, corresponding with the English date, 14th of September, 2022. Hazrat Wala starts off by quoting the ayat of the Quran in Majid, Wa inna kala ala khulukin azim. I have in front of me the risala of a buzruk. And much details has been mentioned in here. After quoting the khutbah, Hazarwala says that there are some glimpses or just some sparks or just portions, atoms of what the essence actually is of the akhlaq and the kamalat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And whatever the outward says, and portrays is actually the mirror effect of what is actually on the inside. Al-Zahiru Inwanul Batin. That the outside is actually a reflection of what is inside. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha <coughs> Just opened it up. was asked about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uh, character. فَسَأَلْتُهَا أَنْ أَخْلَاقِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I asked her about the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she said to me that كَانَ خُلُقُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Qur'an that the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is actually what Allah Ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, all those sifat that are enumerated there. So, مَنْ لَمْ يَخْشَ قَلْبُهُ لَمْ يَخْشَ جَوَارِحُهُ That person whose heart doesn't fear, then there will be no effect on his limbs and his organs, his outward as well. So, if a person has khushu, khudu in his heart, you would also find that there in his limbs. <clears throat> if a person is walking, from his walk also you will be able to understand what's his condition of his inside. So this dawa claims and ananiyat, self-conceitedness, I can do this and I can do that there, that is actually what we see on the outside, what becomes apparent, is actually a translation of what is the internal of a person. Now the Mashaykh, by and large, in fact, Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib Hazrat Wala is saying that he would look at the Zahir, due to which from there he would do his, able to do his calculation. It is not always that the Buzurgan Deen has, have Kashf, rather a person uh, does this or says this, due to which there would be great signs in all of that denoting whether he has pride in himself or whether he has jealousy. So I was saying, مَنْ لَمْ يَخْشَ قَلْبُهُ لَمْ يَخْشَ جَوَارِحُهُ You know, this is actually the, the jaan and the essence of suluk and tasawwuf. That the outside also is a duplicate of what's happening inside. That's why it's also important, Hazarwala is saying, that a person's external also is correct. So the person whose heart is not decorated with the characteristics and the etiquette of the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his akhlaq, that person most definitely will be mahroom of the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Hazrat Mawlana Muhammad Ahmad Sahib, Hazrat Wala is saying, used to quote to us so, on so many occasions about this incident of this prince or this young man who comes about and is walking with such a type of an attitude, pride, arrogance, etc. Due to which one of these mashayikh said to him that what type of a walk is this here? What are you doing? How are you walking? And he answers there 
by saying, don't you know who I am? He says, most definitely I know who you are. Your start is actually by that of a impure drop of a sperm. Presently, while you are now standing in front of me, you are walking around with so much of impurity, dirt and feces in your stomach. And your end result would be that your body would be left to the earth where it would rot and it would be eaten by the insects of the earth. That, that, that is uh, who you are. You're asking me, do you know who I am? I know exactly who you are, who we all are. One of the signs of takabbur and pride is that a person wants a status, a person wants sadarat, a person wants to be outstanding and distinguished, he wants to be on the top. Whereas Rasulullah himself, what can we even say about the great high level of his humility? It's actually amazing and astonishing that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would sit wherever he would find any uh, empty space. Hazrat Maulana Shaheed rahimahullah used to say that that person who is executing the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then too you do not see upon him the rain of the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then most definitely it is because of some obstacle which is within himself, some deficiency and some shortage which is within this person here. That obstacle or whatever it is, that is actually why the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not raining down upon him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let all this uloom uh, spread throughout the world. You know, Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to say, what I am saying in this camera, in this small room, Allah will make it reach the corners of the world. And in that day and age, there was no real uh, sophistication or uh, real means and azbab like how we have today. Uh, uh, mic systems and recorders and phones of this si of this level, alat, instruments. It wasn't like that. So we continue, and we understand that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was one who. Uh, lowered himself so much in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Da'imu sawal min Allah ta'ala. He was always making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah ta'ala beautifies him and decorates him with beautiful adab and characteristics and the most noble character. And he would say in his dua, Allahumma hassin khalqi wa khuluqi. That, O oh Allah, beautify my character uh, oh, oh Allah beautify my oh Allah beautify my my appearance and my character hasin khalqi wa khuluki beautify my appearance and my character what we are called and Nabi Sallallahu used to say Allahumma jannibni munkaratil akhlaq Oh Allah keep me away from abhorrent character Allahu Akbar so this Da'awi and these claims or uh, false claims, I am like this and I done this and I reached here. This was one of the special topics of Rasulullah, uh, of Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib. So Allah Ta'ala accepts the dua of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and He reveals the Quran to him and he cultures him in such a way that his character and disposition is whatever is mentioned. All those 
adab and akhlaq which is mentioned in the Quran is found in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now we carry on and we continue that Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran in Majid, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. Allah Ta'ala commands with justice and kindness. Allah Ta'ala wants us to have justice within us and a kindness. Hazrat Manana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to say, sometimes people come here and they word it like this and like that, charb zaban in their speech, and they come and ask me to make dua for this type of court case and that type of court case. But in all of this year, their claims are false. They're going to court. They're doing wrong things there, etc. And they come to me to ask for dua. What can I say? I don't even know what is the real uh, uh, aspect there. What are they doing? I make dua for them. But, wo jane Allah jane. That person knows what he's doing. And Allah Rabbul Izzat most definitely is aware of everything what they are doing. So this year, justice and kindness, it is for all, whether they are the elite, the religious, the ulama, or the laity, whether it is male or female, no one is uh, excluded from that. Hazrat Manana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to say that generally, when it comes to the earning, and to do this and to do that and whatever is happening, there is no real fight, debate or quarrel. However, when it comes to taqseem, to the distribution of all this now, then you would find there is jagra, then there is this problem and that problem. So all of us, including myself, I also have this thought, overwhelming thought of this year all the time. Rather, from a very young age, I used to have that. You know, back in the day, I would earn maybe 30 rupees. I would take 10 and allocate it for my father, another 10 then for my sister, and the 10 I used to keep for myself. Another ayat of the Quran in Majid, Allah Ta'ala speaks about the Khudil Afwa, wa murbil urf, wa aridanil jahilin. That adopt forgiveness. You will be faced with different, different situations. Adopt forgiveness. I didn't even have an estimation that it was written uh, to such an extent, this kitab, and so much. Uh, whereas, I mean, I have, for some time ago, I have already went through the entire kitab. You know, when uh, one alim, very senior, Bare Admi, senior person, came and he spoke in Nadwatul Ulama. What was his topic? What did he pass on to the people? Khudil Afwa, wa murbil urf, wa aridanil jahilin. So, just mere recitation, there is reward for it, but it is not sufficient. We need to understand what is this message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. Forgiveness, forgiving our students, our family at home, spouse, children, etc. You know, many times, Parents want to know and they keep on uh, demanding that the children should do this and that and the other. But how much are they fulfilling the rights of the children? And the Hazarwana even gives an, a, an incident about a child uh, uh, being beaten up so terribly. And he goes on to say that we have not sent the child here to get beaten up. We have sent the child here so that the child can get talim. Yes, okay, he's not learning, then leave him like that. But no room for beating up a child to that extent? Or like this year? Allahu Akbar. Even Hazarwala then goes on to say and speak about these nails on our fingers that we only have the ijazat to pair them and shorten them. But no more ijazat than that, that we can cause harm to ourselves and take out the entire nail or do this or that or the other. Similarly with the beard. It's not that we completely take it off. There's no ijazat for that. Or trim it less than, than the amount that it should be trimmed. Or even leave it to flow so much 
or to leave it at such a length. No, not even that. So we're speaking about this year that that should be, I mean, the, the words that comes in, in the narrations is غَيْرَ مُبَرَّحْ If need be for that, it should be done in such a way that there's no mark or the, the child is not wounded by that. Another ayat of the Quran in Majid, Wasbir Sabran Jamila and exercise patience in a most beautiful manner, the most beautiful way. In in that light, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was left standing for three days on end. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told to his face, You are like this because your parents were like this. Allahu Akbar. As terrible as that. But Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was silent, whereas the person in front of him also, who was asking for his money, did not even come on the appointed date. He came some time before that. Umar radiallahu ta'ala even sought permission for Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to execute that person. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no Umar, rather look at this, even at such, such a delicate point, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says and gives the ummah, Talim. And what did he say? He says to him, O oh Umar, you tell me that I must pay up the, the debt and tell that person, give him the talim, that he must be lenient and kind and compassion. Allahu Akbar. So the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been established to be so complete, so perfect. Allah Ta'ala grant us also a portion from that. I mean, in the mornings and in the evenings, some amount of wazaif, awrad, tilawat, etc. That's in its place. But what about this category of akhlaq? The akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was such that the entire dunya was affected by it. There was a kitab, Isha'at Islam, and this kitab used to be read out in the khanka of Hazrat Manana Shah Wasiullah sahab. Uh, those days in Fatapur, uh, Manana Jami sahab used to read out. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, feed the people whether they are Muslim or not. Visit the people and go and see to their needs those who are sick, whether they are Muslim or they are not Muslim. Now tell me, shouldn't we such a small risala like this year but shouldn't we make this common shouldn't we print this year there was a jewish youngster who was battling to uh, carry that uh, leather skin filled up with water and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam helps him and brings it right to his doorstep and then the youngster then just pulls it into the house he manages to do that when the parents notice this year and they say but no they start calculating, you, you will not be able to carry this, how did you bring it? And he says, there's a gentleman at the door. And to their surprise, they see it is none other than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam due to which they accept Islam. Allahu Akbar. The incident that I always quote to you that a Bedouin comes into the masjid and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam starts shifting himself and moving back. And he says to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O oh, Nabi of Allah, there is so much of space. There is so much of space. I can't manage. Why are you shifting back? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then says, uh, Should I not even make that amount of movement and harkat uh, on the arrival of a believer? Allahu Akbar. You know, in the kitab, Mala Buddha Min. In there also there is a kitab and a chapter of Kitabul Ihsan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if any person invited him, he would accept that invitation. Now we understand that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his akhlaq, he done this and he done that, he done the other. In the positive, right? What he did do. His akhlaq in that sense. And now we come to this part here where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa from his akhlaq, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa did not do this, he did not do that, he did not do the other. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never used to come across with anger, rather with a most delightful and pleasant appearance. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not listen to music. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept the Muslims 
far away from futile activities and false things. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was never miserly due to which people were left uh, deprived. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever did fraud. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever uh, used to back, never ever back, no backbiting from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam un uh, unnecessarily, unduly, never ever interfered and came between the conversation of two people. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever abandoned uh, relatives. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever showed pride. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never called people by bad uh, titles. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever had jealousy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would never ever confront and trouble even his enemies. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever deceived people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was always a tolerant. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a just. Now, the dua that we just read just now. Hazardwana then ends of this masjidis by making dua and he adopts that same dua. Allahumma hassin khalqi wa khuluqi. O oh Allah, beautify my appearance and my character. Allahumma jannibni munkaratil akhlaq. O oh Allah, keep me away from abhorrent uh, character. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a complete salvation from the evil characteristics pride and jealousy and greed and miserliness and the list goes on uh, so many of the family members are not well my son-in-law as well and all others whoever is sick Allah Ta'ala grant them all Shifa Allah Ta'ala protect us from leprosy and white liver and madness and all types of sicknesses whether they are apparent, zahiri, or they are batini. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. Wa tub alayna innaka anta tawabur rahim. Bi hurmati sayyidin nabiyyil kareem. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.